In this video, I'm going to give my thoughts on the new Reason 12 update, what this means for Reason Studios going forward, and how it affects you. If you're not subscribed, hit that button, give this video a like, let's get into it. I have tried my best to be fair and objective with my criticisms of Reason over the years. I have a lot of respect for Ryan and Matthias and everyone else that works at Reason Studios. I have been a long time fanboy. I thought Reason was the best. I would always try and convince my other producer friends to make the switch and get on board with Reason. But it became a harder and harder sell. None of them actually left their DAWs for Reason. And in fact, it was me who left Reason for another DAW. Reason Studios' chronic lack of making any meaningful workflow enhancements to the sequencer and the mixer pushed me away. It was only because the rack became available as a VST plugin that I continue to use the software. If you've used Reason for years and are happy with the software and happy with the Reason environment, then that is great. But objectively, the gap between Reason and almost every other door is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. In terms of workflow improvements, Reason 11 was a terrible update. They didn't offer very much and the features that they did update were implemented pretty poorly. Reason 11 launched with a suite tier which gave you access to a whole bunch of other Reason Studios rack extensions. However, they didn't offer any discount to users who had already paid full price for these rack extensions. This felt particularly dishonest as I remember them pushing sales on these rack extensions a month prior to the release, when they knew full well the users who they were trying to convince to buy these rack extensions would be able to get them for free in a month's time if they purchased the suite. Thankfully, I didn't fall for any of these sales because I was still tossing up whether I wanted to continue using Reason at all at this point. So they released Reason 11 and it sucked, but Reason was now a VST. So I was willing to give Reason Studios the benefit of the doubt. I assumed converting the rack to a VST format probably took a lot of time in terms of development. So maybe that's why we had a lot of light workflow features added to the DAW component. At this point, Reason was no longer my main DAW, but I was stoked to be able to continue using the software as a VST in Ableton. Then came Reason Plus, which I think has the potential to be really awesome and which I think is not quite currently there yet. From my perspective, Reason Studio seems to have this chronic issue of not being able to execute on things properly. In Reason 11, crossfades were not done very well. Prior to that, they added VST support. But years later, we still can't use VST3, which means a bunch of plugins don't work properly. Everything feels half done or lazily implemented. This is a point I will continue to demonstrate as I talk about the new features in Reason 12. Anyway, Reason Plus comes out, they release a few bangers, Beatmap, Friction, Algorithm, all fantastic devices. These are the kind of rack extensions that embody the kind of innovation I've always loved from Reason Studios. This gave me hope that Reason 12 was gonna be awesome. Then we started getting red flags. Reason Plus users were given early access to parts of Reason 12 as they were being released. The first things we got were high-res graphics and a browser update. I made a video about how these felt half done and lazily implemented, but I stressed that I would hold my final verdict until Reason 12 was officially released. Well, 12 is officially released, and they are still half done and lazily implemented. Radical Pianos was um, was not HD when I dragged it in yesterday. I assumed it would have loaded by now. Um, why the heck is this add device button? What, what, is, what is this? This is not... This is not HD. This add device button is not HD. These, these are HD. These are not, uh, like, how long? How long are we gonna wait for this? There is no conceivable reason 
while we need to scale a browser, and many of the browser elements aren't in high res, why would you update the graphics of every rack device, giving us a spinning fan animation, but decide that improving basic icons and navigation buttons on the browser is too much work, half done, and lazily implemented. Speaking of the browser, operating it is still a frustrating experience. Yes, it's better, but I don't care. If they are gonna market the browser update as being an entire 25% of the Reason 12 release, then it had better be freaking amazing. I'm not giving Reason Studios props for doing the absolute bare minimum. Until the browser gives me audio previews of my patches and preferably tags as well, I won't consider it an upgrade. Half done and lazily implemented. The first features of Reason 12 were not looking good, but I figured Reason Studios would release some of their lighter features first to whet people's appetites. After all, we still have the Mimic Creative Sampler, and the Combinator to look forward to at this point. And this was just the early access stuff. Of course, there would also be other workflow improvements to the DAW and the VST plugin as well, surely. I remember there being a lot of concerns when Reason Plus was introduced that Reason Studios was going to phase out the DAW. But Matthias assured us that they would continue to support Reason as a standalone DAW, okay? I like Matthias, so I took him at his word and chose to give Reason Studios the benefit of the doubt again. After all, I assume they are a small company and have been busy developing Reason Plus and the other rack extensions that have been released over the last year. Reason 11 did absolutely nothing meaningful in terms of updating the DAW, so I was looking forward to what Reason 12 would add in terms of workflow and functionality enhancements to show that they are actually still serious about Reason as a DAW. I expected to get grouping functionality for tracks and the sequencer and mixer, as well as VST3 support. But do you know what we got? Nothing. We got nothing. There were absolutely no updates, let alone meaningful ones, that aim to improve the functionality or capability of Reason as a DAW. At this point, I no longer believe Reason Studios have any intention of supporting Reason as a DAW. From what I've seen, I think it's gonna end up the same as Recycle. It's there and it's supported on paper, but every year that passes makes it less and less relevant and causes users more and more frustration. Not every user, of course, but the power users who need a lot more functionality and workflow optimizations that Reason doesn't provide. The advanced users who don't necessarily want to have to spend a significant amount of time and money buying and learning how to use another DAW to a high level. If you love using Reason as a DAW, then that's great. A lot of people do, but there's a growing section of the Reason community whose needs are changing and they need their DAW to change with them. Before I get a lot of people in the comments saying, don't expect Reason to be something it's not, or use a different DAW if you don't like Reason. Look, I get it. I understand the benefits of limitations when it comes to making music. In fact, that's one of the things I love about Reason Studios' general approach to designing instruments and effects. They don't always nail it, but when they do, they create devices that I reach for all the time. I just want them to be straight up about what they are doing with the DAW because either they view it as an alternative to the likes of Ableton, Studio One, Cubase, etc. In which case, they actually need to make it a viable alternative to what can arguably be considered more professional DAWs. Guys, it's been like five minutes. It's still not in HD. That looks terrible. How, how did, did they did they forget to do Radical Piano or something? Like what the heck is this? I just want to point out that Radical Piano, where is it? This is where I noticed it. That's how I record Piano patch. Okay. So Radical Piano is in this patch. I opened this patch yesterday when I was working on this session and it was in my session 
for hours while I was making this beat and it still it still didn't load. So um, I don't know. Did, did you forget to update Radical Piano Reason Studios? Because this looks like trash. They actually need to make it a viable alternative to what can arguably be considered more professional DAWs. Or they need to acknowledge that Reason as a DAW is never going to be more than a fun environment where you can play with the rack. Which is fine too, but I just want to know. Stop stringing users along. The rack. That's the core product, not reason as a DAW, just the rack. And if the rack is their core product, if reason plus is the only thing they're interested in pushing, which after the reason 12 update is becoming more and more apparent, then I think reason as a DAW should be free. Users could subscribe to reason plus or buy licenses to bundles of rack extensions and then use those rack extensions wherever they want as a VST inside a more serious DAW or in the free standalone version of Reason. This would allow Reason Studios to have a free starter product like Studio One Prime or Complete Start, a taster that allows users to get a sense of the software and all it has to offer. If they like it, they could subscribe to Reason Plus or buy rack extensions separately for their own rack. But Reason is a DAW and maybe some of the basic instruments would be free. They could even have combinator patches for the starter version of the software. Users could interact with the front panel of the combinator, which the new combinator is great, I think, with the limitation of maybe not being able to get in and change any of the devices unless they own them or subscribe to Reason Plus. It frustrates me because I think there is so much potential for a free version of the DAW to be a fantastic tool in the education space, as well as just a great way to get more people using Reason in general, which despite what it might seem like from my criticism, I do actually want to see more people using Reason. I continue to pay for Reason. I continue to use Reason. For the most part, I love Reason, which is why I'll continue to offer constructive criticisms and suggestions as to how I think it could be better. So we've got high res graphics and we've got a browser update. Half done and lazily implemented. That leaves the Mimic Creative Sampler and the new Combinator. Turns out we knew everything that was coming before the launch date. It was nothing else. I've already made a couple of videos about the Mimic Creative Sampler and my thoughts on that haven't changed. They have added pitch detection, which is a fantastic feature, and I appreciate Reason Studios listening to the community in regards to that. But it is still destroying my CPU to the point that it's barely playable when used as a VST. And unless they fix this and some of the other issues I talk about in my Mimic videos, I don't think I'll use it often, if at all. Someone commented on my Mimic video and said that Reason Studio should have started with the basic slicing functionality that Simpler or Machine have and built the creative sampler bit on top of that, which I think is spot on. This is what I assumed they would do. And I was super excited to see Reason Studios work their magic with a sampler. As I've said before, I really like a lot of Reason Studio's instruments and effects, but sampling is also a massive part of my workflow. As a producer who does a lot of sample juggling and beat manipulation, I was really looking forward to seeing how Reason Studios would enhance this experience with the Mimic Creative Sampler, adding further possibilities that I may not have thought about for creativity and that style of production, but they didn't. I'm starting to wonder if anyone at Reason Studios even does that style of production because Mimic feels like it was made by producers who don't often use that kind of workflow. You can check out my other two videos on Mimic linked in the description. That leaves the new Combinator. The single redeeming feature in the Reason 12 update. Is it good? It's great. Is there room for improvement? I think so. Is it enough to justify upgrading? No. Probably not. If you're on a budget and don't do a ton of sound design using the rack, I would honestly consider spending your money elsewhere. You could check out the Native Instruments Complete Package if you're looking for sounds and effects, or give another DAW a go if you aren't loving where Reason seems to be going or not going 
with theirs. If money isn't a factor though, buy it anyway. The Combinator is cool, high-res graphics are helpful, but those are about the only two things and are definitely not worth the upgrade price. If you head along to the Reason 12 release blog post, you can download a folder with all the new Combinator patches so you can check them all out in one go. That's what I did and it's a great way to explore some of the new layouts that the Combinator offers. I put my favorites in a folder and made a beat with them. Everything you hear in this track, minus one layer of drums, is from one of the new Combinator patches in Reason 12. So this is my beat that I made with my favorite new Combinator patches. Let's have a look at some of these new Combinator patches. You can see we've kind of got this basic synth format on the front here. We can click devices, see everything that's involved. What I tried to do with a lot of these was automate parameters on the front of the synth to give movement throughout the track. Oh yeah, this one's dope. Love that. Again, same kind of same kind of panel on the front. Gorgeous pad. What's this one? That's got this really cool arpeggiated kind of flavor. Again, pretty much the same panel on the front. I used it in a riff like this. You can kind of you can kind of hear that. Um, arpeggiated vibe really come out in this note. I have no idea what's causing it to do that. I haven't looked. I think that's the beauty of these combinator patches is you can just treat them as instruments. This one here is pretty cool. These are supposed to be recreations of a Moog synth. I love how the front panel of it looks here. That's so dope. It, it just letting you basically use the Combinator as a synth. You don't have to go in and see what's caused it, but you can. This is a Combinator patch that I made myself to experiment with what you can do. Basically, I took one of these Beatmaker plugins, which I actually really like, and mapped the different drums to different faders. So you can pull them in and out at different points in the track. I also 
made a solo here for just the kick and the snare, solo for just the hats, and a kill switch to take everything off completely, uh, as well as a button which puts the instrument in half time. These ones here, uh, just controlling the ambience and the sweep of the thing. So this whole idea here, I think, is really, really cool because you can make an instrument like this Beatmaker plugin really, really playable. I automated all of these parameters across the track. So then there's a couple of other cool things too, like this one here. I couldn't fit that into my track, but that's kind of dope. Or this one here, if you hit run. You can like pull out the kick. Turn off the hats, the snare. Get rid of the pad. Distort it. So I think there is a lot of potential with this new combinator for really cool performance patches. You can see all of the crazy stuff that's going on in this particular <laughs> in this particular one. We've got all of these settings to change things. We can make it look however the heck we want. But there's also a couple of things that you can't do with this combinator. Like I, I love the general idea. I think the fact that we can control all of these different types of faders and knobs and stuff is fantastic. This is by far the best thing in the Reason 12 update. However, I still think there's some room for improvement. And I'd love to see Reason Studios add a few more things to this combinator in coming updates. I would like to see an XY pad. I would also like to see some kind of meter or whatever, which I think would be really helpful on patches where the front of the combinator essentially becomes a synth. Say you wanted to have a knob controlling a compressor, for example, if you could have a meter that displayed what the compressor was doing inside the synth, that would give you a lot more visual feedback on the front panel of the combinator and allow you to treat it more like a synth. I would also love to see an option to include a 16 pad layer, like, like machine or like Kong, that maybe mirrored whatever was happening inside the device so that you could see, you could get visual cues again, what's happening inside the device or even a step sequencer. I think that kind of stuff would be really cool. I would also like to see kind of a, a, a virtual keyboard on the front of the sequencer. So again, you can see what you're playing. And I'd like to have slightly more flexible options in terms of the inputs. Yeah. But overall, I think this new combinator is really, really cool. And I think it's an exciting update in terms of future releases, especially for Reason Plus and the possibilities for packs in Reason Plus. I also think if they did what I suggested and made Reason like with a free version or whatever, check it out. Let's say someone was on a free version of Reason. They could have an instrument like this which for all intents and purposes is a synth. If you didn't know that you could click the editor or the, the devices and open it and show what's in it, you'd just think that was a plugin. And so people who might be on a free version, not necessarily this one or whatever, but may, maybe could have access to some kind of patches like this that they can still interact with in a way that is very reason, but they maybe couldn't open the device panel and, and get inside and change things. I'd love to see that. So in summary, Reason 12 is an embarrassing update. With the exception of the Combinator, which is great but could be better, everything is half done or lazily implemented. I no longer have any faith that Reason Studios is going to continue to support Reason as a DAW. And I'm also shocked they didn't include beat map, friction, and algorithm in the Reason 12 update. This makes me more convinced than ever that all they are interested in doing is pushing people to subscribe to Reason Plus, which I will continue to pay for and use because despite my many frustrations, I still love the software and the people behind it 
and want to see them sort out their crap so I can start recommending it to people again. As it stands, if you don't want to subscribe to Reason Plus, I couldn't advise anyone on a budget to put their music making money towards Reason. It will be an improvement for some people, especially if you love working in Reason and don't have any issues with the workflow. But if you're a beginner or intermediate producer who isn't heavily invested in the DAW, I wouldn't recommend Reason at this point. The company seems more unreliable and inconsistent every year. I have no idea what direction they are heading, but they've lost my trust. And I think it would take a few years of consistently good updates to, to get it back. But to be honest, given their track record over the last three years, I don't know if they're capable of doing that. I said I'd wait till Reason 12 was officially released before giving my final opinion. Half done and lazily implemented. <laughs> That's the video, guys. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of Reason 12? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? Why not? Stog Music Musician also made a great video where he offered a pretty balanced review of the Reason 12 up. I'll link his video in the description as well, so check it out if you're still on the fence. I think he's got some good thoughts. Ugh, I'm super disappointed because I really wanted to love this update. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Despite everything I've said, I still use Reason all the time and will continue to make videos about Reason. Although, I'm probably also going to branch out and explore some other topics. Let me know if you've got any ideas about what you want to see. I want to leave you with this. I wrote a list of all the features that were included in the last versions of Reason to compare with what we got in Reason 12. Check it out. I'll see you guys next time.